same way we came, God, open our spiritual mind. We uh, speak freedom and liberation over every life, every person, every home, every family. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke every plan of the enemy, God, and we decree and declare that victory is ours in Jesus' name and by the authority that you have given unto us. God, we pray in Jesus' name, and we all say tonight, amen, amen. Brother Eddie, good to see you all here. Uh, on uh, tonight, Brother uh, Eddie. Listen, tonight we have uh, been off for a couple of weeks. Uh, off for a couple of weeks. And uh, and we're back. Uh, we're back on tonight. And we want to do what God has called for us to do. Eddie, get the whole crew on here for me tonight. Get the whole uh, crew on tonight so we can uh, let them know we get ready to discuss something tonight. Uh, a few weeks ago, several weeks ago, we started a, uh, Sister John, get the whole crew on here, <clears throat> a discussion 
about the uh, uh, overcoming uh, the demonic uh, strongholds, overcoming strongholds of our uh, in our mind and uh, strongholds that the enemy uh, has placed, uh, the grips that the enemy has placed upon our minds and our thinking and the way we think and the way we respond. And then, but most of all, the way we uh, uh, perhaps eventually end up carrying out what the enemy uh, uh, has planted uh, in our mind. So tonight we want to go back to uh, the scripture that uh, we uh, initially talked about in uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, and I'll read verses uh, uh, 3 through 5 tonight. Bianco, good to see you. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5 tonight. This is going to be my background scripture, and I'm going to say this tonight before, before I uh, get too far gone. This is going to be my... Uh, foundation of scripture, then I'll come back and then I'll try to explain as much as I can with the time that uh, I have tonight to uh, uh, see if we can uh, get through these couple of verses that God has uh, given us on uh, tonight. So that's 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, Mother Kitchens. Listen to what it says. It says, For uh, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to to the flesh. Verse 4 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses, or depending on what translation you read it, it'll have strongholds. Verse number 5, Michaela says, We are destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Here's what I want everybody to do. There's 16, look like 17 people on here tonight. I want you somewhere to find something and write this verse down. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, verses 3 through 5. Write it down, jot it down, put it in your notes, text it to yourself. Do something so that you can go back later on and uh, look at this scripture and just take the time to read through what this particular scripture is saying to us. Uh, on tonight. So again, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and somebody may post it, I would show sure would appreciate it. Chapter number 10, verses 3 through 5. Uh, First Lady uh, Lashua of Yolandria, for although we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of stronghold or fortresses. We are destroying speculation in every lofty thing are raised up against the knowledge of God, and we're taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That is the word of God for the people of God, and we pray that God would have a blessing upon the readers and the obeyers of this uh, holy word. So let's, let's get into it tonight. Let's discuss it tonight. So what I want to do tonight is uh, uh, go ahead on and give you what I'm talking about. We're still talking about overcoming the uh, stronghold, the mental strongholds of the enemy, but uh, thank you, Sister Richard, and that is. So here's what I want to say to us tonight. Thank you, Clarissa. Here's what I want to say. I got my music off. I got. I ain't going to play no music tonight, so I just want to come on tonight, and I want to talk, because one mind said that you don't feel good enough tonight to come on, and so I I, I, I got in, in, in the little office, and I got to meditate with God, and I said that there is something that God wants us to to grasp from this lesson tonight, but then there's also the, something that the enemy does not want us to uh, glean from this lesson uh, on tonight. So here's what all of us need to understand, 18 and 19, and I'll make 20 and 21. That is a strategic plan. That is a strategic plan, Brother James Morgan. Good to see you, my brother. That is a strategic plan. That any of you said it's confirmation. We dealt with the same text in Bible study. And here's what I here's what I know. Uh, some things, uh, uh, Pastor, uh, are not coincidental. I had this uh, conversation with uh, uh, at least four or five people just just this week. So here's what here's, here's what God is saying to the body of Christ. Here's what God is saying to the body of Christ. Give us a clock. That is a strategic plan, and God said, "Don't miss it." God said, "Don't get so caught up with what we're doing, and don't get so busy that we're missing the obvious." So there is a strategic plan by the enemy, 
And that plan involves and is centered around mind control. It's centered around. Satan has orchestrated the plan. And that plan that Satan has orchestrated is centered around mind control and mind manipulation. Here's what the enemy wants to do. The enemy wants to control the mind. Somebody may want to know why does the enemy want to control my mind because he understands this. Uh, whoever controls the mind controls the life. He who controls the mind controls the life. So Satan, here, here's the thing, Satan feels as though he's at a disadvantage. At this particular point, though, says Rose, at this particular point, Satan feels somewhat uh, at a disadvantage. He feels as though he's losing ground, or he feels as though, here's what he understands for sure. He understands that time is winding up. He understands that uh, 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 it, it won't be long before uh, Jesus makes his return to the earth. And, and so what he has to do, he has to try to get as many people as he can get to miss out on heaven as he possibly can. And so he feels like he's losing ground. And here's what the enemy is too smart. And some of us, we won't, and I'm not giving him any credit, he's too cunning and he's too smart to come to us and just obviously do things. So what he does, he does it in a subliminal way. He sends messages or he does it in a way that we will not recognize those things or that thing which is obvious. So we've got to understand tonight, every last one of us tonight, the enemy is out to, to manipulate our minds. The enemy is out to control our minds. As a matter of fact, if you think about it, this has been his plan from day one. Uh, the enemy doesn't have any new tricks. He just keeps using the same ones over and 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 again. And the sad part about that is not the fact that he keeps using the same tactics over and over and over again, but in the body of Christ, we keep falling for the same thing that the enemy is doing over and over again. As a matter of fact, when you go back to the beginning, uh, uh, we discovered that this has been the enemy's plan, KK, from day one. When you go back uh, uh, in the book of Genesis, uh, in regards to Adam and Eve, here's what the enemy ended up doing. Sheila, good to see you. Here's what the enemy ended up doing to Adam and Eve and all of those. If you've been in anybody's church, if you've been in anybody's Sunday school, you know Adam and Eve. And, uh, and so I'm going to read a couple of snippets from that just to kind of uh, give you a, a broader picture of what I'm trying to convey to us tonight. So what did, overall, what did the enemy do in the Garden of Eden? Well, if I had to sum up everything that happened in the Garden of Eden, I would use two words. Uh, how he goes to the woman and how he uh, tricks this woman and then they end up, you know, you got no story. So two words, here's what I would use, mind manipulation. That's what he did in the Garden of Eden. So in the Garden of Eden, here's what he said. He said, you know what? That plan worked. And because that plan worked, I'm going to keep trying to play the same hand over and over and over and over and over and over again. So what I want us to do now, I want us to listen to Genesis chapter 2 verses 16 and 17, and then I'll go to Genesis chapter number 3, and then I'll come back to uh, and, and wrap this up, and all of this is going to make sense to us in the end. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17, I'm going to show you the mind manipulation. In verse number 2, here's what God said. Verse 16 says, And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, verse 17, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. That's the word of God. Flip one verse, or one chapter rather, over to chapter number three, and read verses one through six. Listen to what it says. Now the serpent was more subtle, he was more cunning, more crafty than any other beast of the field which the Lord had made. And so watch what he does. The Bible said, and he said unto the woman, has God said that you should not eat of every tree of the garden? Verse number two says, and the woman says to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, 
You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Verse number four says, And the servant said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Verse five, For God doth know in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods or like God, knowing good and evil. Verse number six, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was spread into the eye of the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and she gave unto her husband, and he did eat also. The first thing you notice in this passage of Scripture is that the serpent is now talking to the woman by herself. God gives a command to the woman, the man relates to it. So he gets her off to herself and begins talking to the woman herself. Now, when you look at this, there are two ways that we can either look at this situation. Either Adam was listening to what the serpent said and he was physically there, or he was not there uh, in a physical sense, but wasn't too far in a distance. Either way, he was absent. He was, he was not there. Here's what we need to understand. The Bible says that the serpent was more subtle, he was more cunning, he was more crafty than any of the beasts of the field that the Lord God has made. Here's the thing, that's a phrase that the young people got going around, that's a phrase that everybody got. Uh, I understood the assignment. That's good. Understand it, perform it, do it, operate in it. But here's what you need to understand too, that the serpent or the enemy also understands the assignment given to you even though the assignment given to you has come through God. So the enemy, the serpent, whatever you want to call it, he understood their assignment. So in the midst of him understanding the assignment, he wanted to make sure that they did not understand or that they did not fulfill the assignment that God had placed upon their lives. Stay with me. So watch this. So the serpent takes what God says and he mixes it with a lie. He takes what God said. He took what God said, which is the truth, and he mixed it with a lie to confuse them in their minds. So the moment Satan or the serpent, the devil, raises the issue of doubt, he knew that he almost had a grip or a stronghold on their minds. He knew that if they did not uh, immediately deal with the contradiction that they, uh, 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 the contradictory information that they had in their mind, that sooner or later they would end up carrying out what their mind was telling them to do. So here, here's the thing in verse number six, it says that when the woman saw that the tree was she, uh, she ate of the fruit of them and gave also unto her husband, and he did eat also. So as we continue this series tonight on overcoming strongholds of the mind, I want us tonight to raise the bar. I want us to think from a different perspective. I want us to think about something uh, that we may not have thought about as of late, something that uh, uh, maybe we thought about it in. And, and then pay a whole heap of attention to. And here's the reason I bring all of this into the forefront tonight. That is a, uh, that is a, uh, a certain teaching. There is a, a teaching that's going around. There are certain teachings and certain doctrines that's going around to manipulate the mindset of the body of Christ, to confuse the mind, to, to cause people not to operate the way God has designed for them to operate. And just this week, just this week alone, the last couple of weeks, we've had this conversation with people about doctrine, about, about people taking what God says, mixing their own opinion and their own views, and they're playing mind games with people who, uh, as I said to, I think it was maybe Sister Richardson last night, that you would trust that the people who are your pastors and your preachers and people who are supposed to know the Bible, you would trust that they are, they're not operating in manipulation. So here's, here's what uh, God spoke to me uh, beginning uh, yesterday. And I don't know anything else to call it. I don't know nothing else to call it. 
That is a cult teaching, cult teaching, false teaching that's destroying the lives and people's relationship with God. Last couple of years, we've had to deal with with with, with, uh, with the COVID. COVID did this thing, but then watch this. That's that's something that many people have not taken into account. There's some post-COVID stuff. There's some just kind of know you was on here. There's some post-COVID stuff that the body of Christ is going to have to deal with. And if you don't have that level of discernment, if you don't have Sister Burke, that level of knowing what God said over and against what the enemy is trying to put in, then you're going to be fooled. You're going to be bamboozled. So I said, there's some post-COVID stuff that the body of Christ is having to deal with and it's come to the forefront or into fruition as of late uh, post-COVID. Well, I said, Hosea chapter number four uh, and verse number six, if my mind serves me right, it says that my people are destroyed. Why? For the lack of knowledge. Go back to Adam and Eve and, 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 and the Bible. go back to Eve in the Bible. It wasn't that the knowledge of God wasn't there, but they rejected the knowledge. He says, My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. Second Corinthians chapter number two and verse number eleven says this right here for the King James Version. It says, Let Satan should gain an advantage, an upper hand on us. We are not ignorant. Ignorant, ignorant, we're not ignorant. Ignorant has to do with the mind, not knowing. He said, well, we're, we're not ignorant of his devices. He says, unless Satan should get an advantage of us, in other words, flip it. He said, if we don't know, if we don't recognize, we're not aware, if we don't know, what the devices of the enemy is, he says that Satan is going to gain an advantage over us. There's one more before I get into this scripture. How much time I got? 20 minutes? Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 14. It says that we should be henceforth no more like children. Little children, notice little children, you have to take them out of hand, you have to take them to the playground, you have to take them to the, the lunchroom, you have to lead them around, you have to get you know. Yeah. He said, there comes a point in our lives, there's 22 other people, and there's at least four of you all on here tonight. You've had this discussion this week with somebody, this is just confirmation as to what God is trying to get to you in your life. God says there comes a point in your life when you're not like children or in your spiritual life, when you're not like little children anymore. The people are not taking you by the hand and leading you in every which way. He said that's the point that you're not like children anymore. You're being tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning and craftiness whereby we lie in wait to be deceived. He said that come, there ought to be a level of maturity. And I was talking to some of my class, man, I was on the Talking with uh, Sister John and Sister uh, Cassandra, that comes a time. There ought to be a time in your life that you have matured from a spiritual perspective, and you recognize right off the bat, no, 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 that ain't no, that ain't from God, right there. That ain't that ain't from God. That ain't that ain't got that ain't got nothing to do. It may have something to do with a God, but it ain't got nothing to do with 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 the God. So here's what he says in Matthew: that in these days that we're living in. Many false prophets with false teaching shall arise and shall deceive. Deception. Mine. He said, many will be deceived. Somebody asked me this the other day. Somebody asked me this, and I'm not going to say who it is. Somebody, uh, 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 and I don't know if they were here tonight. Here's what they said to me, and, I, and let me say it again. They say, there's, there, there's doctrine and teachings. There's captivating the minds of people and keeping people hostile and keeping people away. And uh, there it is, uh, sister, uh, 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 Kat, I got that scripture wrote down somewhere uh, in, in, this, in, in, this, in this notepad. So somebody said this to me the other day, and I'm going to say this, and I get me in some trouble. Hey, I'm not a politician, I'm not a president, I'm a preacher. They said that, uh, they asked the question, they asked the question, uh, could you, somewhere along this thing, uh, uh, could you get blessing when people read and stuff? This and stuff. Oh, right there. Stop right there. Stop right there. If you are in the body of Christ, if you are born again, child of God, do not let people bamboozle you and fool you into this 
astrologers to reading signs and horoscopes and all of this. All I'm trying to do the best I can, trying to, all of this stuff, reading stars and all that, all that, no, 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 no. And so what the enemy has said to the body of Christ, I'm not talking to the ones not in the body, I just let this, we have to deal with them. But for those of us who are in the body of Christ, God said there comes a time when what people are saying to you and the stuff that they're trying to get over to you and trying to convince you of, you immediately say, no, that ain't, that ain't, that, that's, that's not from God. Because if you go along and have this group of people say, well, I don't want to fear no matter what. You, as a child of God, you have a right, you have the authority to call those things, call it what it is. It's false teaching. It's a cult-like teaching. I don't need no, I don't need God made God. I don't need no palm readers. I don't need no psychics and no fortune tellers and everything. I don't need that kind of stuff. And reading my stars and my horoscopes and I, I don't go around telling people I'm a Leo. I don't, I don't even engage in none of that. I don't, no, no, no. If what you're saying to me does not line up with the word of God, I'm going to take issue with it. I can tell you all day what my opinion is, but the minute that my opinion contradicts the word of God, you ought to take issue with what I'm saying to you. So here we are tonight, we're talking about mind controlling the enemy, captivating our mind, placing strongholds and grips on our mind so that we won't think outside of the box, so that we won't think bigger, so we won't live better lives. So the enemy wants to control our minds because he wants to control our lives, and then he wants to control where we spend eternity. So here's what he does. He targets, he targets the head. He targets the head because the head, he understands that the head leads the rest of you to wherever it wants to take you. That's from a spiritual perspective, a mental perspective, or a physical one. So what we need to do, that is Jessica, what we need to do, we need to be like football players tonight. We need to have on our helmets one of our weapons in Ephesians chapter number 6. Uh, he gives us something to protect our minds. He gives us something to protect our heads. It's called the helmet of salvation. So now that I've laid the groundwork, Jessica, the groundwork, let me go back and grab 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5, and then my time will be up tonight. So what I want to do, I'm going to go back and read this scripture because this has been our basic scripture, our foundational scripture from uh, the start of this series. And I want us to listen to what 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5 is saying to us, and then hopefully tonight, by the time we get off tonight, you'll be thinking from a different perspective, and your mindset will no longer be the same. Y'all give me one minute, let me drink my water. Go to it. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, 4, and verse number 5. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Verse 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not the flesh, but divine and powerful for the destruction of fortresses or strongholds. Verse number 5, for we are destroying speculation, Jacqueline, and every lofty thing, circle that. Think about the thinking, that's it, Kat. And every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God, and we're taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That's really what I wanted to get to right there. Verse number five. We are destroying every speculation. We are destroying every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we're taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That ought to be our prayer. God help me to destroy every lofty thing, every speculation that's raised up or that's contradictory to the knowledge that you have given to me. That's all I want to show you in verse number five. When you go back, I told you all to write it down, write the scripture down, put it in your note, text it to yourself. In verse number five, you see this phrase, lofty thing, lofty thing. It says in verse five, this lofty thing that has been raised up against in contradiction and opposition to the knowledge of God. So what is Paul saying to us tonight? Here's what he's saying. The reason why Satan keeps a stronghold on us is because there has been a petition or a wall in our minds, Pastor Reed. In other words, he says, there is a blockage of the mind. 
There are speculations and thoughts raised up, petition against or walled out against the knowledge in opposition or contradiction to the knowledge of God. So why says, so what the enemy does is he sets up these walls, he sets up these petitions in the mind so that the truth of God can get through. Let, let, me, let me say it. Let me say it again. Let me, uh, let me say it. Let me say it again. He, he sets up petitions. He sets up walls, division in our minds so that the truth of God, lofty things in our mind, so that the truth of God cannot penetrate or the knowledge of God cannot penetrate and get through to us. Watch this one. I'm in, um, I'm in this, uh, uh, See if I can um, uh, make this make, make sense to us. I ain't got this in the notes, so don't y'all laugh at me if I mess this up right, right here. I'm in this office right here. I'm in, I'm in this office. If I was to open these blinds, the sun would, 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 would be able to, to come through uh, these blinds. Now, on the other side of this wall, there's a wall here. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in a walled room. On the other side of this wall, is a bathroom. If I open the blind, although there, there's another room that exists on the other side of this wall, sun cannot get through to the bathroom because there's a wall that's standing between the sun and this other room. Well, it's the same way in the body of Christ. Satan has walled off our thinking. Satan has petitioned our thinking, speculation and our thought. And so watch this. No matter how many sermons you hear, no matter how many songs you quote, how, how you shout, it cannot cross over into the other room because something is standing between what's trying to get to you. Just God, I do that, I do pretty good. Just, just, yeah, yeah. There's something that contradictory, there's some contradictory information that the enemy does not want the knowledge of God to cross over into. So he said, if this information gets to them, then this is going to happen. They won't have the same mindset. They won't be thinking and living and walking and talking the same way. So what I have to do, I have to put up a wall. I have to put up a defense to keep out or to push back the information that God is trying to get us. As a matter of fact, he calls the information another one. He calls it uh, a partial off mind. He calls it the information, knowledge, and speculation. Notice what he says, against, against the knowledge of God. Scoot in here for scoot in. Get, get, get your wheels like I got on and scoot in here. Scoot in here. For every person on this live, for every preacher, every deacon, every person on this live, if what people are trying to, if it's me, let me just use me, can nobody else get mad at me but me. If what I'm saying to you, if the knowledge I'm trying to relate to you is standing in opposition to what you know God says to you, to what you know the truth of God is, if what I'm saying to you is contradictory, to the knowledge of God, you need to take issue with what I'm saying to you. So he says this lofty thing is contradicting what God says, what God thinks, so that it doesn't go all the way through and it can't get to you. And so if it can't get to you, then guess what? You won't live a free life because you're always thinking the same way. You always got this uh, mindset. We always have, we have this mindset. And so he knows that as long as I can keep this information from you, the longer I keep you from operating the way God wants you to operate. So guess what I got to do? I got to keep this knowledge away from you. But then he said, I got to have you to the point where, where, where I mix a little bit of what the Bible says to you. But then I mix a whole lot of nonsense and a whole lot of this and a whole lot of that so that I confuse you. But in a way, I'm setting up this petition so that the full truth and the full knowledge of God can get so what's happening is the enemy is able to keep the truth of God from fully infiltrating our lives and our thought patterns 
And that's the reason why uh, uh, we, we feel like we have victory one moment and then feel like we have defeat the next moment. This blockage, this, the, this, these lofty things, it keeps popping up. And then in verse number four, he said, it's a fortress. Notice what he says. He says, it's a fortress, it's a prison, it's a tomb, it's a, it's a, it's a stronghold. So that the minute that you think, you're, you're, you're thinking, you're set free, you think you're out, you find out, no, I'm still in. Why? Because the information that the sun is trying to get to you has not penetrated to you because of this wall. The standing between the knowledge and you. And so here's the thing. This partition or this wall that I've been making reference to tonight in this office, this wall, this partition made sure that the information or made sure that the sun didn't shine through or get through to the bathroom on the other side. So now the Bible, Bible has a word for this, lofty things or these lofty things. It's called double-mindedness, 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 double-mindedness. That's the whole gist of what I've been trying to suggest to us tonight. That's why I went back to the book of Genesis. His, 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 his plan is to get them to think double-minded. Double, two mind, thought, thinking, and two different directions at the same time. It's Satan's job to keep you from keep you thinking in two ways at the same time. So I said, what do you mean, two ways? What do you mean? It's the job of the enemy. My time up? Yeah. It's the job of the enemy to cause you to think in two different directions at the same time. That's good. Mm -hmm. He doesn't mind you getting God's thoughts. He don't mind you coming on TNT Tuesday night teaching. He don't mind you going to Wednesday night word on Wednesday. He don't mind you going and getting God's thoughts on Sunday. As long as he can keep what you got on Sunday from penetrating your life with this wall, on Monday. If he can if he can get you to have God thoughts on Sunday, but then you operate in his thoughts on Monday, he can keep God's thoughts from penetrating the whole you and you being exposed to the full knowledge of God. And so therefore, God's thoughts cannot get to us. Here's what I see. Here's what I saw in the spirit. Here's what I saw when I was praying today. Uh, God showed me in the spirit. Uh, I saw, I saw, I, I don't know what my boy name, uh, um, uh, y'all know my boy, um, McCain on Rifle Man. I got to bring him in my Bible stuff. On them cowboy movies, they take these lasso and they catch these bulls and they catch these, these horses and these cows and things. They take, take this lasso and they throw it around their neck and they pull that calf and they pull that horse and they pull this animal in this direction. Here's what I see in the body of Christ. Here's what I see in the spirit. Not only do God see me people being lassoed in the spirit, but I also see people who are being blindfolded. Tony, I see people who are being bamboozled. I see people who can, so when I put that together, I see people, number one, I see the blindfold. I see people who can't see what the enemy is doing. I see people who cannot, who cannot focus. I see people who are so, who are so caught up in religion and tradition that they cannot see the obvious being penetrated against their lives and against their family lives of the enemy. So God showed me in the spirit today a blindfold of people. And when you're blindfolded, you can't see. They really cannot comprehend. It really not some people's fault. Some people haven't been exposed to a different level of teaching. And then there are some people who get too much teaching. You eat from everybody. You eat from everybody's table. You can't eat from everybody because everybody can't cook. I'm just going to leave that. I'm going to leave that in there. So not only did I see people being last over, I see people uh, being blindfolded and taken away. People who are missing 
the whole message who cannot see in the spiritual realm what the enemy is trying to do in our lives and in this season with all of this. And there are some teaching out there. And I'm just going to say this. There are some teaching out there that if you're not ready, you're going to be tossed with everyone. That's why you see people every, every week they hear, they over there, they hear anything and everything that sounds good to them, they adapt to. Yeah, I don't care what it is. I talk to people, not, not, not 23 people on here, thank God for y'all 23. But there are some people I talk to, anything that sounds good, they float, they, they, they roll with it. They go, they, 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 yeah. they don't investigate it. They don't, they don't, they don't research it. And they just take it for granted. And so here's what it is. If I had to sum this up, here's what I was summing up. With the enemy uses devices. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 11, he uses devices. It says so that Satan uh, cannot gain an advantage over us. We don't, we don't need to be ignorant of his devices. We don't need to be ignorant to the teachings, to these doctrines that's contradictory to what we got some people on here. I'm not why this. There are some people that uh, I don't understand how we uh, drifted so far away from what we know God has said. And so here's the thing God spoke to me today, and he said, that is a device that the enemy is using. Y'all scoot here real quick. There's a device that the enemy is doing, uh, using against the body of Christ. Why? Because God showed me the spirit. People are not seeing it. They're not seeing the obvious. They're not recognizing it. When you only you can only operate in, in what you've been exposed to. So if you don't have that level of discernment, if you don't have that spiritual discernment to recognize that no, no, this is not the enemy. So here's what you call that one word. Here's what you call it. Witchcraft. There it is, right there. That's what it's called. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's what it's called. It's witch. Which, and it's a man, and some of us, we think about witchcraft, and we think about the, the spells and all of this kind of stuff. Uh, uh, and, and, but, but, but we miss the obvious. God said that you see, that you see stuff, and you, you recognize, you recognize witchcraft and the spells and from doing this and the doing the hoodoo and the goo and and all that. All that. There was an occult level of witchcraft. But then there is a spiritual witchcraft that has infiltrated the body of Christ. David, good to see you on here, man. Has infiltrated uh, the body of Christ. But God said that after tonight, none of us are going to think the same way. We won't be bamboozled with a strong every strong old every petition that raises up everything that raises itself against the knowledge of God. No longer will we be fooled. No longer will we go along with people. No longer will we let people just speak anything, say anything over us in regards to our spiritual life. Now here's what it's going to do tonight. It's going to do one or two things. Now, somebody's already on the call, but that's, that, that's fine. It's going to do one or two things. It's going to make you aware or it's going to make you uncomfortable. That's what it's going to do. But you can't come to me and just tell me anything. And because you quoted it out the Bible, I spoke to eat. No, 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 no. And for those 25 people on, on us tonight, down here tonight, we are going to have to grow in the knowledge of God where we recognize that what you're saying to me and what you're trying to expose me to is contradictory to what I know God has for my life. No longer, no longer would I have to wonder about whether or not God you want me to live and operate in this. And Mona, you better pray for me tonight. And I know when you begin to preach these type of messages that you, you open up yourself from all types of spiritual uh, spiritual attacks. And so I, 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 I know that from, but here's the thing. It, 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 the, 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 the enemy doesn't want us to be set free. The enemy wants us to continue to operate in this now I continue to be this, continue to be that. I've had conversations this week with people, and that new Genesis, I don't call it my church, the church God allowed us to oversee. It's his church. And one of the things that uh, I, I say to, to the people at new, at new Genesis, I want us, I don't want you to think like I want you to think. I want you to be exposed to the knowledge of God, and then you pray for revelation from God, even if it's me standing. Don't take what I say 
as law. You go home, you read it, and you ask God for revelation over that word because there are some people who are operating. Now I'm going to lose more preacher friend. There are some pastors who are operating in this uh, spiritual whip, witchcraft gift, or well, not gift, or uh, it's spiritual witchcraft ordeal, and don't even know that they're operating in it. But again, it's, it's because of that level, and that's, and that's, that's some people, and I'm not where I need to be as a pastor. I just, I, every day I'm growing, every day I'm, I'm opening up, and I'm trying to read, and I'm trying to study the Bible so that God can reveal some things to me, because what I don't want to do, I don't want to relay false information to you, and then you end up because of what I said, missing it. So here's what we need to do tonight. I'm gone. That's my time. That's my time tonight. I'm gone. Here's what we need to do. First thing we need to do. If, if you have any question, if you have any, if you tonight, if that's you scratching your head and you wondering, oh wait a minute, Pastor, you might be on something. That's a good sign. Pastor, wait a minute. Maybe you're on. Here's the first thing you need. To do. I'm gonna give you three points, and then I'm going off tonight. And I'm giving you my hearts, and we're gonna close out tonight. First thing you need to do to overcome. So how do I overcome? I've been exposed to this kind of teaching. I've been exposed uh, to, to, to what I know is false. And some just that sit where there are some people sitting in churches and in, in places getting word of supposed to be, rather, word from God. And you know, and they know that it's not, they know that this is not right. But I got to go along with this. I got, I don't want to fit. No, 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 no. It's time out. For those of us who know better, we have a responsibility, Miss Smith, as the body of Christ. If, if I see you drowning, I'm less than a man and I'm less than a Christian to not send something out there to reach you and grab you and pull you in. I'm less than a man. I'm less than who God called me to be. If I see you drowning and I not help you, I'm not who I'm supposed to be. And that's not from a physical perspective. That's from a spiritual perspective. If I see you drifting away and I don't do nothing, I don't say nothing. And there's people on here tonight. You are associated with people and you know the teaching that they're teaching is not founded in the word of God. And you're just going, oh, I don't want to offend nobody. You're wrong. You're just as wrong as they are if you don't say nothing or if you don't tell people, no, 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 no. Now, you can't force your opinion on people. You tell them, and then you let God give them the revelation about that particular thing. So here's the first thing you need to do. You need to recognize it for what it is. Don't try to dress it up. Don't try to say, well, yeah, well, you know, maybe. Not. No, you need to recognize it for what it is. It's spiritual witchcraft. That's what it is. It's mind manipulation. It's a device of the enemy to keep your mind in one place. So that you can always live this type of life in this kind of box. So number one, you got to recognize it for what it is. But here's the second thing, you got to repent of it. There are some things that I had to repent of, even though it wasn't even my fault. I repent of God, but I, God, I'm sorry for listening to it. God, forgive me for even taking it in. Just go, go, repent of it. So God, I, I repent. And, and repent means, here's the third one, you return to God. You recognize it, you repent, and then you return. God, I'm sorry for doing it, but then you go back to God and say, God, make, make, make this right with me. I want to get right with you. And don't let this, this what, 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 what the enemy has been trying to uh, infiltrate in my mind and my spirit, don't let it take grasp and grow and mature in my life. So here's what he said tonight. I'm going back to this verse number five. Here's what he says to us. Tonight, tonight we are destroying the mere fact that we're on here and you've been on here this long. I'll pray out tonight. If we're going to touch and agree, everybody tonight before you go to bed tonight, you're going to pray this prayer, God. I'm destroying every speculation, every lofty thing, every wall that's raised up against the knowledge that you have given to me. And I'm taking every thought captive to the obedience. Of Christ. That's my prayer tonight. That's my prayer for every person on here tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. Destroy every speculation. Destroy every false teaching, every lofty thing in these people lives that are raised up against the knowledge of you. And God, tonight we take authority and we take every thought in the name of Jesus captive to the obedience of Christ in Jesus' name. Give me my heart. I'm gone. I'm through. I'm gone tonight. I'm finished tonight. I'm through. Y'all give me my heart. Y'all give me my heart. 
Ya Rabbi min mahawat. I went over my time. I was going to let y'all go. I said, boy, look at all them hawas I got up there tonight. Woo! Come on, give me my heart. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Charlie, good to see you back on here. You stay with me on here, Charlie. Thank you. Well, look at all these hearts going up. Look at Sister Richardson got the gold hard, red hearts. And boy, y'all making me feel good. The green hearts and, and all of them. Chris, thank y'all. Shay is on here. Get dinner out the cabin, Shay. And get tell me, give me my heart. Sister Mother Kitchen is on here. The Christine, hey Christine. All y'all on here tonight. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Look at that door. The car gonna come down and give me some, uh, some more food. I, I ate my food before I got back to the house the other week. Mom, they call me when I get off this phone. I mean, I'm just live tonight. Listen, I'm gone. I'm gone tonight. Uh, I told uh, somebody tonight that I wasn't, wasn't gonna come on tonight. I, I was thinking I was talking to uh, Toya earlier. And God said, no, 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 we got to get on there. David, say King King David, King David deal. Uh, thank you, Sister Jessica. Sunday's message in the night's teaching is a done deal. New Genesis, look at that, done deal. New Genesis, Jessica. Thank you so good to see you on here tonight. Tell, 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 tell the Mister, I say hello. Uh, thank y'all. Listen, I'm gone. Got to get me back to eat. Got a couple of phone calls to make tonight, and we pray that tonight. Again, that scripture tonight. Make sure you go back and read 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Let that be your verse you read tonight before getting in that bed tonight. Next week, we'll be on. And so here's what we need to create the cloud tonight. We still got to do it until God says, don't do it any longer. We're going to continue to pray that we overcome these mental strongholds here. Whatever it is that the enemy is trying to do in our lives. Thank y'all so much. Y'all let us uh, share this. Let somebody LC, if you go back and study, you go back and review it, and then you go back and if you got any questions, y'all know how to, uh, y'all know how to, how to, how to get in touch. Those that know how to get in touch with me know how to get in touch with me. All right, listen, I pray God blessings upon each of us. I pray that uh, God will continue to protect us and sustain us through this week. Thanks to them, Gene Bear. Tell my boy, I say hello. I uh, pray that all of us have a blessed night and uh, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock a.m. Well, we're going to start at 8 o'clock. We got about five or six to baptize. Sunday morning, then we're going to uh, uh, worship service, 10 o'clock a.m. New Genesis Christian Church, 8920 Mid South Drive, Olive Branch, Mississippi. So if you're in the Olive Branch area, if you wake up Sunday, you're just looking for somewhere to go. Please, we got Justice. She already down there. What did you at, Justice? Blue, where you at? Blue Mountain or somewhere? No, that's just for Blue Mountain or Bruce or uh, Water Valley or somewhere. We got people coming from Water Valley and everywhere. Down John Grove Road. And everywhere coming to Water Valley, that's coming all the way from Water Valley. We got people coming to Chulahoma and Mariana and Matthew Corner. So, hey, wherever you're from, wherever you all are from, come see us at the New Genesis Christian Church 8920 Mid South Drive, Olive Branch, Mississippi. Listen, until then, God bless you. We love you. There's absolutely, positively nothing you all can do about it. Bless you.